Okay, let's bring the meeting to order. Is there any uh, changes or additions to the agenda as presented? Just to add, um, winter maintenance of class four roads for homeowners. Winter roads, okay, any other? None. I would also add, I believe these as posted meeting minutes are from a previous agenda. I know we went October 14th in front of us, and which was, which one? You can have one of mine. Verbatim. September, was that September 16th? And then I guess you still need to prove the, approve the ones from October 7th also, because you didn't approve anything at the, at the special meeting last week. Okay, so October 7th, October 14th, and then the September 16th, uh, 16th I think. 16th. That's not the date all corrected, because okay. we don't know what, what we're talking about. I think it is the 16th. Other than that, is there any other changes or adjustments? Seeing none. Uh, before we start, I would just like to acknowledge we've lost a couple of uh, uh, pillars in this community with uh, Barb Dodge and, and uh, Sharon Buffy, and they both contributed in many ways. Uh, Barb was one of our uh, town report dedicated uh, dedicated to her and, her and Frank, as well as Karen. Uh, Sharon was a constable and health officer. So I ask that we just have a moment of silence in their memory. Thank you. And town's prayers are to the family of both Sharon and Barb. First item is the approving the meeting minutes. And I would show that they are for September 16th, October 7th, and October 14th. The board have pleasure there. I haven't actually read the October 7th meeting minutes yet. I would move that we approve the September 16th and October 7th meeting minutes. And you have not read the October 14th? Um, yes, 14th. That's correct. what came today. Correct. Okay, we have a motion for the September 16th, and that's the updated? The updated. And the October 7th, do we have a second? Second. Second. Is there any discussion? I would ask what we have in the verbatim meeting minutes that you felt was missing from the uh, the, the original version that Donna had typed up? Um, well, in that section specifically, I just felt like a lot of the conversation was missing that I wanted to make sure was documented. <laughs> I, I guess where I'm going at with this is, this is not the first time we've done it recently. <laughs> and... Uh, I mean, by law, we have to have actionable uh, items that the board has taken. Motions, uh, uh, who, who uh, made the motion, and what the board's decision was. And if you look at some of our historical meeting minutes, that's as much as there is. I mean, it's just a, a plain document. I've always felt that... Uh, Donna does an exceptional job of getting the context of the of the dis discussion while not verbatim. Uh, and I think there's good reasons for that. So that if somebody in the, some number of years in the future was to look back at some decision the board had made, they would be able to understand what was the intent of the board in making this decision because it might not be clear with just a motion and, and approval 
but I guess I, I I'm hesitant to support um, having it verbatim unless there's some outcome from that that you felt was necessary and is captured. Mm -hmm. And and keeping in mind that somebody were looking at these meeting minutes 10 or 100 years from now, what are they going to be? Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Let me shut this damn thing off. Um, mm -hmm. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, I do. I guess in this case, um, uh, that particular agenda item was written up in this newspaper and I didn't feel like it was properly represented. Like what was taken from the meeting minutes, the, our unapproved meeting minutes wasn't, um, yeah, wasn't showing a, enough of that discussion. Okay. I, I'm, I don't want to con confuse it, the fact with what the media may report versus what we record for meeting minutes. But, but I, you know, I, I, whatever the board's pleasure is on that, uh, I, I voiced my concern that that was my reservations from doing this verbatim recording because I, I think. Donna really captures it very well. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that she, she doesn't typically. Mm -hmm. In this situation, the way that it was represented in the media, I felt like it there wasn't um, the minutes then didn't reflect enough of what I had said. Okay. So. Is there any other discussion? The meeting minutes for nine sixteen and ten seven. I sort of feel like I should respond to to your position, which is that I, I this is as you I believe indicated this is not the first time we've done that. Um, I think there are occasions. I think we write our minutes for the current people as well as for posterity, and I don't think we need to do the. Uh, it's not a vote of confidence in, in Donna. We can have a show of hands, and I'll be show our confidence in that. I think that there are some things that we would like to uh, have on the record, since this is the record of what we've done. So um, I'm not uh, sorry about going to the well every now and then to to, to get that out. And you know. And when you do that, you don't necessarily, because we're all in the discussion, you don't necessarily know what it's going to show or not going to show. Mm -hmm. If you've seen a read transcript versus testimony, a lot of times you know that the transcript is just a shadow of the testimony. I think the only time we've ever done it was when we had an employee situation come to a meeting of a discussion that we thought should be verbatim. Uh, that's the only time I can think of that we've actually done it. <coughs> and that was for a specific reason. Yeah. It's a dog bite case, is the one I remember. There was a dog bite case when we had it verbatim. Donna might remember better than me, but. I, oh, well, yeah, that's right, the dog bite. Yeah, but. There that was, was a hearing. Before that, the time that Ann came in about the parking lot. Oh, okay. I think Mike was the one that asked that that verbatim, too. Okay, I missed yep. it. Yeah. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Is the board, I know Nat was not prepared in his motion oh, yeah. for the October 14th, but is the rest of the board comfortable uh, approving the me meeting minutes of October 14th? I haven't had an opportunity to read them in my time. Okay, then we'll pass over that. Rosemary, you got the floor. <clears throat> okay, you got your budget status report. The date where uh, twenty-eight percent of budget spent. And you notice the stone overhead overrun of stone, we're at sixty four hundred and the budget is down, so it's because they open up the pit again. Mm -hmm. 
cool. You received our second our way to state aid money. And we should be receiving our pilot money by the end of the month. a list of current delinquent taxes. It's down to $79,000. We'll give them to the first of the year to uh, get caught up. And, and it goes to the attorney. attorney. Okay. And current taxes were at 38.25% total collected for the year which is on target in the past two years. And I have the loan paper documents for the purchase of a new truck. For 150000 from Community National Bank. I have the non-arbitrage and use of proceeds certificate, which needs a board signature. Promissory note and the resolution to borrow the money, which needs the whole board of signatures. What's board's pleasure? Make a motion to approve the slate. Is that <clears throat> anybody comfortable making that motion? So moved. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. A motion. Second. Any discussion? Who the truck is going to come by the end of the month? Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Eyes have it. Put your John Hancock on. Here. Okay. Anything else? I have. Um, the Monster Youth Center is having two cocktail parties. Should be going to be serving alcohol at, and they need um, approval. And then you sign. Yes. Yeah. One is on Sunday, October twenty seventh, from five thirty to six, and the other one is on the Sunday, November twenty fourth, from five to six. And they have their. Person who has taken the course to serve the patch to the What's the board's pleasure? Approve, approve with conditions or deny? The first one is 536 and the second one is 536. Motion to approve without conditions. We have a motion to approve without conditions. Do we have a second? Second. A motion is second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Kyle forgot to sign up. <laughs> We gotta pay that light bill. Get rid of such a system. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Uh, and Glendon Ingalls, um, we purchased this trailer at the tax sale last year, and now it's gone past redemption date, but he would like to purchase the trailer. 
So we now own it free and clear. Mm -hmm. We can sell it. Are we going to make any money on it? No. We're going to get our money back? That was my proposal. You, know, you have to pay in cash, whatever, all the taxes that are owed on it. Before we send it back over to you. So we'll. We have motion. Wait, what is that motion? Yeah. <laughs> Rosemary said it. She said it, I, and I said I'd make a motion. Well, I guess I'm not clear what it is. Is it Glendale Eagles um, to sell his trailer back to him? Oh, okay. For guys' first name? Glendon. Glendon. For the amount owed in taxes. Is that your motion? Mike? What? Was that your motion? Yes. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay, that motion second. Discussion. Why didn't he just. Pay us to me. Waiver. I'm sorry. He paid. He didn't pay the 16, 17 year. He paid the 17, 18 year. So that year's paid, and this is whatever's balance on this current year. So it, it's pretty. It's about yeah. probably about thousand dollars. Pretty de minimis cost for us to do a mobile home bill of sale yeah. and transfer tax return. Yep. Yeah. We do that in the office. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That's all of Go forth and sell. Anybody got any questions for Rosemary? It was a good deal. Get rid of that trailer. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be yeah, a headache for us. Paying lot rent on it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You got nothing else? Nope. Brian, you got the floor. Just a couple things in our report. Um, that I want to draw attention to one was we finished both the box lot grant and we finished the Wilson, Wilson Road grant. And next year, I'm applying for another grant on uh, Upper French to do 350 meters stitch and still mine those ditches on that first hill on Upper French. And then I do have numbers for you. Last time we met, I was going to get you numbers for the skate park. If we were to do the work, mm -hmm. those are written on the bottom of your page. Broke it down. And none of this will happen until next year. Okay. Have you seen those numbers? Okay. Yes. The uh, page I got didn't have any, um, an in kind value for the town work. Um, but yes, I, I have everything else. And of course, I, I want to add that um, I, I made an age group on estimating how much fill we would need. And um, this came, it came as a total shock because I didn't realize. You have to, I know you have to compact it, so I, just, I didn't compute. And um, basically, <clears throat> unless we have town, unless the town's willing to do the work, this can't happen because the amount of money, if we have to pay every single penny for outside stuff as laid out here, um, that wipes out our rest of the grant money. Mm -hmm. And we're done. If I may, how much of a kind of fill? Uh, it's the, the, the plant mix. It's the structural bill. Yeah. It's from underneath the basketball court. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's my computer. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> structural bill. <laughs> <laughs> That's about all that I have um, for my report. Okay. Anybody got any questions for Brian? I have a question. You have uh, the go over test hole and boring data with the consultant. At one point, Brian's story said that was on his, that was in his court, his to do. Was that? Yes, and we have some data back. I haven't gone over with Brian. We haven't gone over it with the consultant yet. So that's both of you together are going to be working on it? Correct. Okay, great. 
when we met on our priorities last Monday night, that was kind of towards the top of the things that we were really looking to get accomplished because it's obviously time sensitive. Yeah, yeah, I would like to see us move one way or the other and just move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. Anyone else? Um, well, Brian's here. We'll go ahead to the item that you added on the winter road maintenance class four highways. Uh, I guess I would entertain a motion authorizing those homeowners. Sure, I just uh, move that um, we authorize people who own property on class four roads to do winter road maintenance on those roads without applying to the town for a permit. We got a motion. We second. Got a second. A motion and second. Oh, it, it need discussion. This is for the duration of the, the winter 2019, 2020. Okay. So noted friendly amendment. You accept. It. Okay. So noted the motion indicates for the winter. What is winter road maintenance? It's exactly how we defined it last year at this time. It's uh, plowing and sanding. And you're in agreement with it? Yeah. We should have. Okay. I think it'd be nice if they never paid the plowing into their place. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Anything else, Brian? No. Anybody got anything else for Brian? Thank you. Thanks. And there's nothing else on here that would be of interest to you, I don't think. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Dave, you got the floor. So this may take a few more minutes of Brian. And the motion you guys just passed is a heck of a lot more than it. Well, a little more than it we work. Um, we haven't finished policies yet. We're, we're, my meetings are a little more scattered than these. Basically, over the course of three meetings, we came up with some recommendations for class four town roads in the form of motions which contradicted each other on one meeting to the next, so I, we had to really sit down, dig in. The Planning Commission is going to recommend that any right of way that the town owns, they keep in one form or another. Okay, so even the class four town roads that aren't drivable right now, we recommend that we keep those rights of way into the future. But any class four town road which extends beyond the residence, and give me a minute on that, beyond a residence from the last driveway on gets turned into a legal trail. If there is no residence on it, it gets turned into a legal trail. Okay. We fought over legal residence at one point in time. The commission decided to put that in your lap to define a legal residence. And then a month later, we decided to settle it in that we define a residence as anything, any structure, which can be full-time or seasonally occupied. So you're talking a road that has a deer camp on it versus Connie Hall that has permanent residence. Mm -hmm. Basically, to the last driveway would make would be maintained as class four town road. Beyond that, would be turned into a legal trail. The only places that we recommended that you just plain get rid of, throw up the right of way and everything is where our class four town roads extend into state property. There's two or three incidents where class four challenges extend into state property. What's now state forest that we purchased from the wrong trail or <laughs> you know, Charles has some way to do that permanently. <laughs> <laughs> and 
chapters. <coughs> we don't see any need to maintain that right of way on a property that's never going to be really utilized by anybody. And, and it's owned by the state, so it can be utilized for, by everybody. Putting all those things together, these are in the minutes. I brought down a bunch of copies so you guys can all keep them. This is what it ends up by state road as our recommendations for you guys to do. By class four town road, each individual road. <coughs> a few changes, not a whole heck of a lot of them. Um, and like I said, that's the synopsis of what several meetings has come up with. So like my road, all the way up through would be turned into a legal trail. But Cotting Hollow would be maintained as class four to David Prince's driveway. From David Prince's driveway on into the Goma block would be turned into a legal trail. Just as an example. Okay. Part of that stems from the belief in the commission that yes, these people are on class four town roads, but they own the land in the town of Johnson, they're paying taxes in the town of Johnson. They're not paying taxes to the same extent that a class three or class two or class one does because of their evaluation of grand list, but they're still paying taxes to the devil of Johnson. So they're due some sort of service. Okay, so turning that into a legal trail and making them responsible for everything is probably not going to sit well with their insurance companies or with their banks or with it. So that's the basic recommendations based on what we passed. I'm going to try and get you guys a report on those motions, but they're kind of, you know, one meeting, one meeting I wasn't there on July, on July 2nd, I wouldn't be there. And they passed motions that just can't possibly happen. Like they passed a motion for you guys to be responsible for all the culverts and bridges on legal trails. If you read the definition of a class four town road versus a class four legal trail, you guys aren't responsible for culverts and bridges on a legal trail. That's the whole purpose for making it a legal trail. Uh, on into policies, that's going to be more a little more difficult to 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 cover the the motion you guys just passed, we're going to recommend that you maintain the permit system at no charge so that you know who's doing what, who's going to be responsible for what. So like there's three houses up here, like, who's actually doing the plow? Who's going to be responsible for doing the plow? Who's going to step up and do that? And that's just if something happens, a culvert gets ripped up, if you know stone walls get destroyed, you at least know who did it or who was responsible for it. It's not very onerous to come down to town and talk to Brian or, or either Brian and say, "Hey, I need to maintain. I need to plow this road up to my camp, put the floor off my house. I'm going to do it all there. Can give me a permit?" And you just say, "Okay." However, you guys want to fill that out. Um, Functionally, their often isn't just one person on that stretch of road who's maintaining the winter road. It's That's a bunch of neighbors. What we're going to recommend is yeah. that somebody, or maybe two soldiers, are being responsible for maintaining that road over the course of the winter. Gotcha. And that suggests so you have somebody knock, somebody's door to knock on if something gets destroyed. Yeah. Okay, and that's the only reason. We don't, we don't really see any necessi anything necessary to charge fees for that or anything extra for that it's just come in and get a permit so that you can plow it and you are responsible for that when your maintenance uh, by the same token um we've had a couple fairly outspoken members of the community who have 
value the property on class four town roads, address us both in meeting and out of meeting, and not uh, uh, well, they have a point, okay. In the instance of some sort of natural catastrophe right now, a hurricane I mean, actually hits here. Maybe it's not well, town wide. Maybe it's maybe it's one beaver pond that's loose because of I mean I lost the brook crossing three weeks ago because of that storm. A beaver pond someplace let loose and you know my culvert flipped upside down and I can't get to my sugar boats. What do I do? Class four town road, the same thing could happen. But there's different structures involved there because you guys own right away. Or the town owns right away. So it's the belief of the planning commission, and we haven't finalized this yet, but at some point, somewhere, sometime in the future, the town kind of needs to take responsibility for the basic structure of the road. I'm not saying it has to be so many feet wide. I'm not saying it has to be perfectly smooth. But in the case of the road becoming impassable, Here again, I'm falling back on the fact that landowners are paying taxes on that road. The town should, in our belief, take some responsibility for the basic structure of that road. Washouts can occur in between culverts. I've seen it a lot. A culvert can work just fine, and you can have an 18 inch deep washout in between that you can't get across. So we talked a lot with Brian in our last meeting. Some of what we're fleshing out for policies that is so difficult. Um, how do you, you guys have a line in, in your budget that you can fund for annual maintenance of class four town homes, right? But if you fund that to a certain amount, how do you distribute that amongst the, the class four town homes? And one of the things we discussed, which seems to be fairly well accepted, I don't know how we're going to work it out, but it seems to be fairly well accepted, is to create a hierarchy of what the landowners can offer to cost share with you guys on that town road. Okay? And I'll pick on him because he's sitting here tonight. That guy right there, Daryl, said, you know, we have a washout up on Reservoir Road. I've got a tractor. I can spread the fat and gravel. If someone brings it to me, I can help fix it. So we're working on right now, figuring out the logistics of how you guys create a hierarchy to say, you know, maybe so-and-so someplace doesn't really want you to fix it. He wants to be responsible for it. That's fine. Or maybe Daryl wants to bring up two loads of gravel and dump it and he'll spread it and pack it. How do you spend that budget line item that year? And that, Brian called it a rubric, but I don't want to put the numbers to it. Um, you might have by a certain date landowners on the class four town road can apply to you guys for use of that money. Application has to be in by a certain date. Part of that application is actually how much they're willing to cost share with you, either dollars out of their pocket or equipment time or however they want to do it. Um, you guys could, could allocate funds according to that to maintain the class four town roads. Second thing we're talking about is separating the surface from the structure of the road. Okay. The surface to what I think about and what most of the planning commission agrees with is you know when you get a little bit of a washout, you go back drag it with your tractor and it's done. You get a culvert that humps up or washes out a little bit, you go. <coughs> Scrapes and dirt on it, and it's done. 
versus the structure of the road is actually the road bed itself down to the depths of the ditches on site. It's the planning commission's belief that and, and actually is in the best interest of the town if landowners on the class four town roads are allowed to deal with the surface and possibly with the ditches, maybe the inlet and the outlet of culverts. <clears throat> Even without permit, if you want to do that, do it that way. But just as a normal maintenance thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, that doesn't it doesn't if they're doing something to benefit the town and maintain the town's asset, and you guys don't have to spend any money on it, I, I think you should let them do it. That's a fantastic idea. It's that simple. You know, Daryl wants to dig ditches out. In a certain spot where they're filling in the leaves or making the bank slumped in, he just needs to make some sort of notification to Brian, either Brian, and says, Hey, this has happened, I'm going to dig it out. It's a done deal. Go do it. Just as long as we know, know that that's happening. It's important in, in all of this that we've talked about, and this is some of the difficulties, it's important that you guys know what's going on because you guys don't necessarily drive class four down roads all every day. So it's important that you guys get notification of what's going on in all of this. But it's not necessarily important that they put up big bonds or uh, any sort of down payment or anything against doing this. Now we did have divided clearly in the planning commission that in any place where the structure of the road is impacted. So in other words, someone wants to put uh, oh, I don't know, uh, a power line across a class four town where they want it, or a water line where they want to dig it down below frost and do everything. Things have to be done in a certain manner to maintain that road so it doesn't degrade. In that situation where you're dealing with a structure, yes, there should be a permit. Yes, there probably should be a bond, a performance bond on that, and there should be liability insurance to make sure that it's not just a fly-by-night person who's going to do it and leave us a mess in the future. But that's dealing with the structure of the road, where they're actually going to dig it up and put it back. It's not necessarily dealing with just the surface. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to you guys yet? Mm -hmm. Any questions yet? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm wondering what the reason is that the um, planning commission would prefer trails to the fourth class roads why would one jump from one to the other well it's because there are certain sections in our class four town road system which from now on in the future shouldn't be a road i mean i can think of the best example I can think of is the class four pine hollow town road down to the normal pond, the water. Pond. That one. the other one I can think of is the old Davis neighborhood trail. I don't know what they call it now, but where, where Bob's camp is. Um, both of those, in order for you guys to get into certain sections of that, would cost an exorbitant amount of money to build a road. I mean, I can't even drive a farm tractor down the water. Pond. You, you, you can't do it. You, no, but let me let me rephrase that. You can do it, but not in the town of right away. Okay, so in the land that right away the town owns, I couldn't even drive my farm tractor. I doubt I could drive a skitter. So, in the onset of the new state legislation for siltation and having to maintain. Um, the water quality on those sections of road for the time being until the state changes their legislation it's easier to turn that into a legal trail maintain the right way maintain the trail network but not be responsible for culverts and bridges and runoff so some cases we have like a county hollow road that i'm familiar with it's a dugway you know the brook versus where you could drive your tractor, it's not our right way. Um, 
the other places it would seem that it's the uh, burden that the um, hydrological connection and our responsibility is driving us to. And as you indicated, that until the state realizes that we're just switching because we don't want that, we want to avoid that responsibility. Um, That's 100% correct. Okay. And um, some of the, that land, probably, that we're switching, probably the, we're benefiting the people who are have their home in or their seasonal residence, but beyond that, if they don't have a driveway, they're, they're on a trail. That's correct. So it's a, it's a line in the sand for where we are today. That's a much softer line in the sand than what I recommended to start with. Okay. So. Um, Which was that? My dividing, my personal dividing line is year-round residences versus seasonal residences. Okay. You know, and, and, and even there, you know, they chose to live there. So I, I've got some questions even there. But I can I can live with the way the planning commission, you know, it's up to you guys, but I can live with what the planning commission chose, which is anybody who's built some sort of infrastructure, has a seasonal camp, has a year-round residence is actually trying to improve the property and is paying their taxes. That has a certain right. Which is, is that class three down road? No. Which is stronger than the right the person to sugar or access it right. or for any other use of it in residence. Right. Okay. That's that's what, what you you've done. You got you gotta draw a line somewhere. Did you guys find out what use there can be of a legal trail? What I can understand the statute on illegal trails is there can be any use of it. Um, vehicular, you know, as labeled by you guys, vehicular or not. Uh, everything from foot traffic to horse up to four-wheeler, jeep, whatever. Um, it's just that you guys don't have responsibility for crossing structures that becomes the responsibility to land on or in the case of like bass where it would become the responsibility of bass to maintain those structures for their use. Do you have any recommendation with regard to uh, our law and gating or not gating? Say what? Gating or not gating? You can't. If, if, my understanding of that is if you guys allow somebody to gate it, there's a certain time period in which it becomes a private road. So I don't know really the answer to that. I was talking to Rob Moore, at, yeah. and he said that we will have the option to have it gated or not. We're, we need to dig into this. I did not look into whether you can gate a legal trail. I know you, if you gate a class four town road and don't do anything with it for a period of time and allow that gate to exist, then eventually it becomes a private road. There is a term for gated highways, and I can't remember off the top of my head, but it has to be Pent Road. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Uh, but what you were just saying, the uh, legal trail, it would be left up to the board from your readings of the state statutes. It's left up to the board of what we would authorize on that trail. So I believe that's correct. If there's a landowner that owns property in there and he wants to log his property, we can authorize logging right. trucks and whatever. In any of this permitting process, in the limited amount we've talked about permitting for use of class four account or a legal trail, <clears throat> we have allowed the landowner or other interested parties. Okay, so if somebody if somebody's gonna have a piece logged off and the logger needs to do something on the road. He needs to get a permit with you guys, tell you what he's going to do. You may or may not request insurance and a performance bond, um, but it goes through that legal structure before he touches the town road, just because of the damage that could be done to it. Yep. Um, 
to was there any thought about um, instead of drawing the line permanently uh, allowing people to request us to you know, putting something in what we might do about allowing us to to move it back from a trail to a uh, fourth class I think I think in statutes that's always there yeah. That a landowner has the right to petition you guys, or a group of landowners has the right to petition you guys to change the status of the road. Whether you guys require any improvement of the road prior to that is up to you guys. In terms of today's discussion, what exists today, no, we haven't thought about that. Um, I kind of have to bite my tongue a little bit because there's a lot of, in our minutes and stuff, there's a lot of, if the owners agree, if the landowners agree, and we're trying to tell them, no, this is a town right away, and it's owned by town, which is adjudicated by you five people right there. Um, it, it, this is a town decision, it's not necessarily a landowner's decision. They're not gonna go out and ask each individual landowner if they can do this. So it's going to make some people mad, I'm sure. Um, welcome to the 20, 21st century. It's reality. We've, we've ignored this for a long, long time. And I think the stance that the Planning Commission is going to take is about as soft as it can be. Do you know when this is going to be before us? Oh, I wish my meetings were as nice and calm as this. I, I don't, because policies is going to policies is going to take some time. Put a camera on. <laughs> well, I thought about that since Phil left. Um, since since Phil resigned, we do have an open chair that we need to fill if we can. Um, in the last meeting, I took the minutes just to stop that, but I didn't know, I haven't asked you guys, I haven't asked Brian if we have any of our budgetary funds left to hire somebody to do, do minutes. Quite honestly, I think if Don came and did minutes, a lot of them might shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like an improvement for an awful lot of people that live on class four rooms that we would actually be taking responsibility for. To more. some extent, there would be some comfort there, especially to lenders and insurance companies, which this town would say that yes, we're, we're ultimately responsible for the structure of the town road, not the surface. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, right now, if there's a catastrophe, if, if, if Cotting Hall will wash the help, how do you get fire trucks to it? You know, and, and, and that, that's an issue. That's an issue with people trying to buy property in town. That's an issue with people trying to live in town. Um, by the same token, I really don't want us having to go out and open up my room to, to fix that all the way out through. Because Right. It's a good vast trail, but I don't want the town to be responsible for that and taxpayers to pay for it. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Perfect sense. We're speaking in the context of fourth class road to to trails, you know. If you go from third class, which you you know, there's a lot of people you know, there, there's a whole other issue out there too of uh, the cost to the town. People have bought land that is not as expensive and uh, they're currently maintaining it, but there's a process. Our, our whole highway system is steeped in 200 years of, of tradition and 
and uh, we've ignored our fourth class highways and we, which is, you've been there almost as long as i have did you know that we have a class four town road on the davis place no neither did i until i looked at the map we have a uh, riding stable road is a class four town road oh yeah right. yeah i know for 150 feet yeah i knew, I, knew that. I, I was thinking the davis place is further up well that's the davis place right there Yes, and further up was the new ones. That's why I knew I had a right away there to it. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> just so you're aware, the amount of work this would entail would be huge. Every single one of these would require a public hearing. All the adjoining landowners would be invited to it. The select board would then have to go and do a public viewing of the highway, and then have a finding of facts of what's in the public's good on what we did. It's so that's every single it's one of these. recommendation. Yeah. Okay. We might not do all of them. <laughs> the it's a recommendation. It's not, it's not cast in stone. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you guys for all the work anyways. And I know it's a lot of work looking at oh, yeah. these highways. It's not an easy subject because no. they're neighbors and friends. As, as, well as. Well, as soon as you get this done, we got an easy one for you. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> the town and sewer district. Oh, yeah. I yeah, know. <laughs> Anybody got any questions? Thanks a lot, Dave. Thank you. You're welcome. I haven't been reporting this on, you know. My, my two girls are home alone right now, so. Bye. See, See you later. Me. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, First of all, thank Gordy for being here. I asked him if he would come in, coincidentally, for the next item we were going to bring up, just to explain where, where the trustees went on this. Uh, he did meet with Brian and explained to him, but Brian explained it to me, but I thought instead of getting it about fourth hand, it might be more beneficial to have Gordy here if we had any questions. The murders study emergers murder <laughs> that's the last subject <laughs> yeah that's the last one merger study contract uh we i understand that you basically the trustees agreed with the comments that concerns we had and did you have any additional ones or we agree with the village of town everything is all county village they want to section seven i think where Communication goes to both Brian and Meredith. Okay, so you want a village included everywhere town is right. mentioned, right? Okay, that's right. Um, we agreed to the cost, but we could have the meeting if we were going to be back off that. Okay. Um, what else was there? That's basically one of the ones I can't have my talking about. I read an article in Google said something that some wanted to make comparisons with some towns that had already merged. And my concern along the record cut is if there's any comparisons on any merger between town and village, it really should contain municipal electrical utility because that's a whole different ballgame for anybody that's an electric company. Mm -hmm. Between the personnel, the equipment, the labor that we write, and all the requirements. And that's what's known in this merger study. But so that's the only other one that should be with the municipal utilities. And other than that, I think. From what you guys would read your list that I highlighted, mm -hmm. I think we're all in agreement. Okay. Great. And I guess. Oh, one other thing I do, I want to thank, I want to know, I want to thank Mike for reaching out to me to, to check with the trustees on seeing if the town and village would use one attorney. So I want to thank you for trying to save the town and village some money. Instead of having two lawyers going back and forth, we would have one. Because there is that saying, one attorney in a town will start to death, but two attorneys in the same town will make a lot of money. <laughs> no, no, nothing against you, Doug. I think I'm the only one. one. <laughs> yeah, he's the only one now. <laughs> he's starving. <laughs> Thank you, Gordy. You know me, I try to pitch a penny. You know? <laughs> okay, so great. Uh, that's great that the trustees came back with this. Well, it's the board's pleasure. We prepared to uh, send it on. Cooperative. Send it on to our attorney with the comments of the select boards and the trustees. Sure. 
Probably ought to make a motion. Sure. Is that your motion? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Did you hear Doug's motion? Yeah. Okay, got a motion. And that was splitting the comments. Oh, no. that's yeah. That was in your motion, in discussion. Right? I okay. like clarification on what the motion is. I'm sorry. I think the motion is to send the contract on to the attorney with the comments from the select board and the trustees. Yeah. You didn't hear Doug say. Oh yeah, it's splitting the costs. <laughs> I didn't. Know. And it's okay that we use the town attorney versus the village attorney instead of the same purpose of the study. Okay. Sure. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Let's vote. That's what we get when we cooperate. And the second item was the Act 250 in the bike trails. And I believe the trustees thought was to have Walter run this through your attorney and you were asking to select the town if we would split that cost with you yeah basically I wrote down some of the thoughts if you want to talk about Walter's trail the motion was passed by the village attorney to look into whether an actual fixed permit is needed and ask Walter or invite Walter to participate in the conference because he's got a lot of the information um, then we'll account for the cost of our legal expense and we just tell the trustees that if we go to our attorney instead of going to the environmental commission, it's going to cut the time way down. If we can get an answer from, from our attorney and say, yes, you can do it, or no, you can't for these reasons, we will know way ahead of time. Then Walter doesn't have to wait for six months or a year or his people to find out what to do with it. And then uh, the one side that sums it up between the five trustees and with a manager that says, as a property owner, the village of town needs to ensure we do not authorize activity on our property that could expose us to regulatory or liability risk, but also to balance this with a desire to allow beneficial development to occur. So we're trying to make a meet halfway, but we still want to cover the base of protection. protection. Walter, right. you have some thoughts on that? You're willing to do this? Well, I, have, I would love to be able to speak to the board this is superfluous as far as I'm concerned. True, but if uh, we make available the village's attorney and the town splits the cost, would you be willing to lay out your plans? Yes. Okay. What's the board's pleasure? So moved. Did, did you get all of his motion? Uh, I, I, I guess I know what it is to... Um... I mean, basically, what the trustees need to do. Okay. Right. Agreed to do this. So. Eric, yeah, excuse me. This, this is for the actual 50 process, right? We have yes. the other part of the environmental end of that, right? Yeah. But it's got one. Yes. Just to clarify. Okay. Do we have Mike, a second. Your motion includes to split the cost with the village? That's correct. Do we have a second? I'll second. Got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? I think uh, Walter used the word superfluous, which uh, sums up my thoughts exactly on this matter. It just seems like it's a little much, but if this is the path of least resistance, I'm willing to go down that road. It seems excessive to me. Any other dis comments, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And the environmental study, is that part of the Talc Mill subdivision? Oh, this is all part of the, I call it Walter's Trail. Okay. You'll either get the credit or the blame on yeah. Walter's Trail. <laughs> What we'd like, what we'd like to do for some discussion from our trustee meeting is to, uh, it's also to avoid anything to do with environmental consultants. I think we all meet this around on a joint meeting. They're just going to be looking for work. They're going to be looking for like fine work. It's going to be expensive. So what, uh, one of the suggestions was actually came from Scott Meyer, who was going to throw him under the bus. He's worked the state a lot on environmental. He's very good on that as, an, as a situation. He suggested the trustees agree to that uh, 
we go with Walter's information, which we've done quite a bit of research already, present that information to a Brownfields committee and ask the lady's name that Scott said runs the department, Trish Capolino. He's got the phone number here. And just ask that the environmental testing needs to be done for the foot trail. And then that puts that right to the foot trail for any more testing. And we feel if we train. The first half we just voted on feeding it this second half, and that one hopefully will give uh, the town village trail committee the green light to work with the city. And we've covered all the bases we feel. You give us some cover. Okay. What's board's thoughts? I think it potentially give me cover. I think it'll uh, determine there's a second step, but I think it's a good place to start. And I hope it's the end. Formally, I want to make a motion to who is going to uh, go forward with this, take the lead on it. Was it? That's what we're in a handicap situation, speaking for the village. Okay. So you're thinking like a Brian or a Meredith, if she was here, right. could do yeah. open that door. Okay. What's board's thoughts? We want to authorize Brian to do this. Sure. So moving. Got a motion. Do. do we have a second? There'll be a second from the right wing tonight. <laughs> they haven't seconded at all, have they? Super superfluous. <laughs> Depends on your perspective. Are you sitting in the audience or are you sitting in the mm -hmm. I'll second it. We have a second. Do we have any more discussion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, all in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. I have it. Yes. I'd love the opportunity to address the board. I'm going to talk more properties. Uh, how about one more item and then you will give you the floor. Thank you. Talk Mill subdivision. I believe the trustees approved the subdivision of the Talk Mill property of the mill house. And then the question now is, I guess, before the select board, and that's uh, correct. Yep. The motion was the motion passed three to two to proceed with the first step of the subdivision. We all agreed that we should not proceed any further on environmental testing or soil testing or air testing or what are you going to do with the property, but only to at least get the door open a door for the subdivision, which then the board should get together. And maybe with public input now just to see what we want to do with that property how to proceed. So I think from the joint meeting, this was the first step that I think pretty much the select board pretty much in full support and trustees were split on. So we are offering to you the a three to two to proceed the next step. What's board's thoughts here? Do we want to ask Brian to start looking into this? Yes. Yes. When is Meredith back? She's back January 1st, but I am in fairly constant communication with her, but I hate to bother anyone and have to be on maternity leave. But For sure. She's not in the dark front story. She's seeing a lot of correspondence to her, and I'm in correspondence with her like twice a week, so she is in a mood. But. Yeah. So the this would be just kind of uh, we're going to proceed. We're gonna we're gonna look at we're gonna have to define the lot and things like that. You know? So it's a conceptual approval of proceeding. So basically, we can give Brian the green light. Not that much probably will happen until Meredith's back, anyways. I'm yeah, I'm strongly in favor of that. Okay. Mike. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay. Then we'll yeah, pass we it. Probably voted on the other night, but we didn't want to. Right. Did you have a uh, well? You had you had a motion, and it's because you had a vote three to two. So right. I would so I move that we uh, proceed in parallel with the uh, trustees on this. Second. Okay, motion and second. We have any more discussion? Didn't give us a chance to second. I know. Let's <laughs> jump in there. <laughs> I'll pull it back. I'll pull it back. Oh, okay. Too late. Jump in. Jump. 
You're going to be a little quicker. <laughs> but things are going good. I want to make sure they stay going good. I'm going. Did you have any other comments? <laughs> <laughs> other than the spoiler? All those in favor, sing probably saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Walter, I'll give you the floor. Thank you. As you all remember, three months ago, this project, the Trout Moon Trails, didn't even, it was just a bunch of lines and paper and get the gathering dust. In three months, we've come a long way. I have met with many, many people, and the community is starting to coalesce around this project. Last week, I met with the Historical Society. They are seem to be psyched about this project. They are willing, they would want to be involved in terms of creating signage with not only for the trails, but also creating additional signage, historical uh, information related to the whole talc mill property and along the rail trail. Okay. So here's an organization that has said this is a fantastic project we want to step up. And I think with a little pride in poking, I can maybe actually maybe get them to actually create a historic trail right down downtown bring people downtown. And as part of the signage, there's going to be hopefully they're going to have something for my trails and hopefully we'll have some room to do something for Johnson Burks. Seems this painting or billboard or whatever that everybody's talking about isn't going to happen. So I'm going to make sure something's going to happen here. Um, Lisa Cruz is hope in the process of getting a grant, fine for a grant, that is going to get us money and money for tools for so we can get some volunteer crews. I'll come to this trail next week. Okay. So I have a, a project that I'm kind of spearheading that is starting to coalesce and gather community support. But then I, I read some of the minutes from this board, and I and I I'm just flabbergasted and stunned, and I don't know what to do. I specifically your October meetings from last Monday. Two months ago, I sat before you and point blank asked you before a lot of volunteers spend a lot of time and effort creating trails, I wanted to know if you have any plans for this property. And you said no. And now I read the minutes from last week, literally two months since I sat before you, and you basically have said five instances you talk about plans for these properties, including logging the property, including paving this, the, the shooting range. These are the places we want to build the trails. So I, I asked myself, what kind of support do I have from this board? I have this, the community has said in their municipal development plan, in the recreation facilities plan, in their natural resources plan, we think this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, but I'm losing support from the select board. Last week, I go off onto the, the Talcum Trails to do some scouting. While I'm up there, there's this giant big backhoe excavator working on the bass trail, digging huge holes, moving lots of dirt. I have asked you to, all I want to use is little hand tools, move a little dirt, but I need to get whole environmental assessments done. Bass is up there digging channels, canals. I'm being held to a different standard. Uh, and I just, I'm right now, I'm at a level of frustration and exasperation that is, is this board behind this project or is it not? It seems everywhere, every step I take, I'm running into a roadblock. I'm running into resistance. And I'm hearing that when I'm reading the minutes, oh, we're going to stall you, slow you down, and put the roadblocks in front of you. And then a couple years after you finish building it, we're going to destroy it because we're going to go log it. So ultimately, at this point, I'm just like, I just can't see spending any more time on this myself and asking anybody else to spend time until I have a firm commitment from this board that this can go forward. Because right now, I am not seeing that. And I'm really, really at my ropes end. I'm sorry if I'm stopping here, but that's what I'm reading and what I'm seeing from this board. Literally, two months after I sat here in front of you and asked you, you were now saying, oh, we're going to go lock this property. I mean, come on. Give me some, give me some assurances that we can move forward and we can do something. The, the plans for this town has developed has said this city is something we want to do. But yet I'm hearing differently now. And before I spend any more time on this, I want some assurances from you for us. I'm sorry. 
Good question, Walter. Does each board member want to answer it? Or, I, or let me first just address what you brought up about the logging. Um, that is something that we've talked about for a couple of years anyways. Um, when we did our uh, priority setting and looking at projects that sort of been hanging out there for years, some of them, um, they just went up on the wall. That doesn't mean necessarily that that logging will get done. I believe the rail trail or the uh, bike trail is also on the wall. Uh, you know, if your bike trail and walking trail never materialized, would we log it? I mean, it's all you know, conceptually down the road and we would have to go through the trustees with anything we did. So I personally uh, am no less committed to seeing that bike and, and walking trail. I, I think it'd be a great asset for this community. But I'll give everybody an opportunity to speak. Again, we, we didn't approve these minutes um, today because uh, most of us, I think most of us, at least some of us have not read them. So these are unapproved minutes. Um, in the past, over the past couple of years, the board has at least touched on most of these issues and talked about them. Monday night's exercise was an effort to bring all of the unresolved issues forward and talk about them and see where they are in the priorities. Um, nowhere did we say we're going to go in and start logging that property. Obviously, we have um, It's just, it's just not what was said at the meeting. Um, likewise, with a parking area. I mean, I brought up that there had been a, um, a, some trash accumulated in an area um, of that property that I thought we needed to clean out. Brian informed us that it has been cleaned out on a regular basis and people would continue to uh, put trash there. Um, and he said sometime in the future that could possibly be a good parking lot and that would resolve that issue. So to, to jump to the conclusion that we're all of a sudden going to build a parking lot there is um, it's it's not our intention and that's not what we were saying we were going to do in those meetings. So, so I'm, I'm an advocate of the trails that you're trying to build and sorry you feel frustrated. Mm -hmm. I heard Jess <coughs> Walter. You know, Walter, why would we have just barely before this authorized to pay for an attorney to look into the Act 250 for this bike trail if we weren't committed to it? Correct? We're committed to it. Well, but I keep getting, if I may, if we were committed, when someone brought up the logging, the response of the board should have been no. We have we are going to do something different. This should, should not even be on the board. That's why I'm seeing. I keep hearing these mixed messages that oh yes and yes no no yes no yes. I we're probably going to be asking volunteers to put in hundreds if not thousands of hours before I ask people to come out and swing a swing at a hole. I want to know a logging crew is not coming in three years from now and clean me up. I want something categorically in here that says, no, we are not going to do this. Otherwise, I am not going to ask people to go out there and spend a lot of sweat hours building trails and watching them get destroyed. I'm sorry, I want firm commitment, and that's what I was looking for. Okay, well, I thought that was firm enough commitment by spending money on attorneys looking into this uh, situation. And I thought it was pretty well discussed uh, that this was old, old business that we were just discussing unapproved minutes. I think you're reading a little bit too much into uh, it. I don't think so. It was old business that should not, it should have been said, this is not what we're going to do. Well, well I tell you, we, if you saw how much we went over the other night, we had that whole board just full of stuff. And it probably kind of, for lack of a better term, got lost in the shuffle. But you should not feel as if we are not committed to your project. Well, all I can assume is what I'm ready. Well, it's not approved minutes. Well, they, they may very well be approved. I haven't read them yet, but or I've read three pages. Uh, but the um, the minutes 
may very well be approved as they are. But what, what happened is that, you know, logging comes up and the subject is, well, oh, okay, well, we'll discuss that. You know, if you'd had, if it had been in front of me and I was voting on it, I would have not held my peace at that point in time, you know, but it was, we'll make it a subject. Now, I don't think we are have backed off at all from the idea that, that you're, this is sliced bread as far as we're concerned. It seems to me that where we are is that where I tried to say at the end, yeah, well, let's let's give Walter a, a go ahead, but let's say we want to, we, we want to have some control over the definition so it just doesn't surrender to us and we know what the, what the you know, here it is. We, we'd like some definition along the way so we can approve it and not be surprised. It's just like a homeowner building a home. You want to know what it's going to be and where it's going to be on it. Now, I don't think there's any conflict, you know, I don't think, I think you've got 100% support here, you know. I think there's definition to be done. Uh, we want to do it right. Uh, we think that you're the person to do it and, and we'll back you on it. But these subjects coming up, you know, we have an obligation on the, the, the property is much broader than just where your trail might be. We have an obligation to figure out between the village and the, tr and the town where things are going, what they might do with it. It's, it's a whole property can be like, can be a great benefit to the community. And we can start with the hiking trail, you know. We have been adding recreational assets to this town and this will be a great one. So I, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't uh, feel that you aren't, we aren't behind you. But I just heard a mixed message that we are still evaluating and trying to figure out what we want to do. I want to go stick shovels in the ground next summer. And, but I don't want to stick a shovel in the ground if you're still evaluating and still trying to decide what to do. And then you decide you're going to just sell it out from underneath me. Or as part of the garages, we're going to sell, we're going to sell the hillside behind the garages where we're going to be putting some of these trails. I just heard a mixed message from you. And it's like, I am asking, we are going to be putting a lot of people's time and effort in this. And before I ask people to do as such, I want to make sure I've got some reasonable assurance. Nothing's going to happen with this thing. Yeah. That we can do what I understand that I've got, to bring, I've got to bring you maps and say this is the plan and that you're going to approve the plan. I, I'm not saying, I, you know, I'm God and I can do what I want. But ultimately, I'm going to say before we spend more effort, before I go to more committees and more groups and say, ask them to do something, and then have to go back to them and say later, oh, sorry, uh, they're going to log this land, so we're not going to do this. I don't want to be in that position. Well, logging came up, and logging has come up on the Goma place. We have logged it. Logging has come up on everything. We try to turn, you know, we're... we're, we're afraid of spending money on lawyers where even though they may or may not be beneficial we're afraid of we're trying to get every penny we come in it's a very typical small town trust town town thing and it's a part of our obligation you know it, it's uh yeah i i don't see the fact that somebody says that I means it's going to happen and if we have committed to a trail and your part of your trail is that uh we don't want it to be go through bare land you know, that should be part of the definition of the trail, the terrain and the environment that it goes through. So it seems to me that would logically, logging would be off limits except as necessary for the trail. Right, and necessary also for ash, the ash borer situation that's coming up that we, you know, we're have, we have to come up with a plan for that as well and juggle, you know, the big picture of what it all means. Um, and you're definitely a big part of that big picture, for sure. I'm sorry you feel frustrated that it doesn't feel like we're behind it when we're talking about these other pieces to that property. Again, I take that as a mixed message. To me, hiking trails is a, you're trying to preserve the natural environment. So if there's a dead ash tree, there's a dead ash tree. And it falls. And it's part of the natural environment. Trees fall in the woods all the time. That's that's called nature. Nature is messy. And all you do is you remove it off the trail. So again, I take that as a mixed message. Um, again, my I guess what I have as a vision, but this is different than your vision. 
And that's where I'm just starting to run into frustration because I, it's just, the bureaucracy is just coming out of the woodwork. And which I mentioned earlier, just superfluous. And now it just, I, at the same time, I'm reading that the board is just is starting to just look at this in other different directions. It just, it just gets frustrating. And that's all I'm going to say. I think some of the, where that whole logging question came from was the uh, vast was came and approached us about making improvements to their trail because they have certain issues with the trail system that goes down through the middle of it. And uh, before they made any improvements, because of the size of some of the timber in there, they were inquiring whether we would be logging it because they wouldn't want to make the improvements, us decide to log it, and then they got to go back in and fix all the, the, you know, the issues. So it's, you know, VAST has as much interest in whether we're going to log it or not as you do. I think it's a question that the board has to, you know, look at and decide. If you go in there and start making trails, I can't foresee this board ever deciding to go in and log because it would undo everything you do. What do the trustees think about this? About the trails? Yeah, or about uh, logging. Well, yeah. it, we're half owners. Are we? Yes, I think. Should we ever want to move forward on the question of logging, we need to absolutely involve the, the trustees first. First off, but do we want to discuss the merits of logging right here tonight? Or, I mean, it's, that's. I'm hoping not. Right, and, and what I'm saying is, you just throw so much doubt on this project. Is do we move forward? Well, I, yeah. I disagree that there's that much doubt in it, but if that's how you perceive it, I, that's up to you. So, Walter, you're sitting at a single issue, okay? And you've sat on the village trustee board for many years. You have many different issues that you have to be a part of and look into. Uh, so some of the things that we were looking into were just other issues. I don't think that you should necessarily think that it's going to encroach upon your trail system. Gordy? Just getting back to speak to the trustees and I'll, to Walter and to the people here, and I'll do what I can to facilitate this process of the active fit environment. I'll do what I can to uh, do it quickly and expedition as we can. So, uh, Walter, you got an idea of what we can do, and hopefully, in the middle of the winter, you're going to get a green light. So, I'll work what I can, I'll work with Eric, and we'll see what we can do to facilitate this. Casey? Uh, that, that's just what I was going to say. In the in the municipal world that you guys have to work in, until you get that Act 250, and that's for, true for Walter's committee too, until the Act 250 comes through, it's not real. And you so, don't need Act 250 for that spot. So she was talking. <sighs> yeah, we were you'll, looking. Get, you'll get an answer, and yeah. then, then it goes on the next step. The question we're looking at is make sure we don't need it. I think what. Walter, you'll find is that we want to green light it. We really want to green light it. And how we assist you in making sure that your volunteers aren't wasting your time while we're doing this, I'm very concerned with. I don't want them to be wasting a single minute, a single hour. We want to green light it. You're, you're not where we are on this. We want to support you. You're not reading us correctly. You're reading minutes, but you're not reading the intent on this issue. Yeah, I don't know. Is that, is that a fair statement? Yes, yes it is. Yes. Definitely. And I don't know what we can do to convince you of that. Seems like he's set his piece. Maybe we should move on. Okay. Uh, Seth, I guess you're up with the Community Development Block Grant. Thank you. Thank you, Walt. Sure. So this is just um, an update that um, Brian asked um, the, to give. Um, so I think you know that um, there's been um, a lot of work with um, uh, Greg Lucas, Kate Rose, and, and Jenny Thomas. Um, uh, and I almost feel like Greg will most of this discussion, but. Um, one of the uh, great organizing meeting with um, 
folks from the agency of commerce and uh, several other state uh, agencies to talk about opportunities for um, funding that work as well as um, a potential uh, redevelopment of the, the coffee house on Main Street and planning for um, uh, other properties in the village. Um, one of the funding options that um, the Agency of Commerce said this would be very competitive for was a community development block grant, um, uh, which is the same uh, funding stream that uh, funded the Sterling Market mm -hmm. um, uh, restoration um, after the uh, 2011 flooding. Um, so there's still sort of some discussion with uh, Agency of Commerce about exactly what components of the whole, whole, whole vision would be the mo most competitive. Um, but because of the development block grant um, is a, a grant that is required to look through the town, um, Brian thought that we should uh, bring it to your attention sooner rather than later. Um, so if if that is a direction that the select board is supportive of, um, and it looks like it fits for uh, the work down there, um, uh, the, tap, the, the way that would work is um, there are public hearings that are required prior to the application. Um, the application uh, flows through the town, um, and um, similar to how uh, the, how um, the store market was managed, um, LCPC would be available to assist with putting together the application as well as administering the application. So that that workload, which for community development block grant, is a lot. Um, wouldn't be necessarily need to fall entirely on, on Brian. Um, so um, if the time frame would potentially be looking at uh, the spring uh, round, which is in um, February, the, the, the February time frame. Um, so that's just wanting to update you on uh, what's sort of uh, what's being discussed there. It's a fairly substantial application, so if there are concerns about applying uh, from the select board, it would be better to know um, before we start wanting to get the application. I think that was one of the reasons Brian thought that we should talk now. Uh -huh. Did you want to add, add anything to that? Well, I haven't talked to Seth for a couple of days, but uh, <laughs> I already started putting the application yeah. together. Just in, uh, the board approved, so that's great. Uh, we've reached out to, uh, there's a group that you sent out that uh, helps put it together grants that the state funded. Yep, the ready. Right, and so yep. we've reached out to them. We've already put our application in. So they can help us put the grant together. Uh, hopefully, it would take a lot of uh, work. We haven't been approved yet, but uh, when we talked to the person, uh, she said, I don't see how we're not going to approve it. Uh, we've already been working on the environmental study and review. Uh, there's no asbestos in the building, which was great. Quite a bit of lead paint. Mm -hmm. on the outside, some on the inside. And uh, I have a lady coming in to do a, a phase one at the end of the month. I mean, these are things I gotta do anyway, whether you guys approve this or you don't. You gotta, you know, things we have to know. Um, what else? And we have a builder that's uh, putting together some estimates and uh, they haven't put much time into it yet. So we're getting familiar with the grant. We're figuring that between this, these other folks and, and our team at our place, that I think we can do most of the work ourselves. So basically what you're asking for, for from us is, this is be a modification to what we current, previously approved. And you're inquiring whether we would be entertaining this modification. So, uh, I guess part of my, my ignorance, I wasn't aware you had already approved moving forward with something. Well, I think case. we approved in concept, and okay. uh, maybe not 
Not yeah. Like sign yeah. or anything like that. But. No wood paste and the green light. Go for it. Was there a discussion about a community development block grant for this? No. It no, originally was, I believe, for you know the the church maybe or some. Yeah, Robert, Robert Wood. Oh yeah. Robert Wood. Yeah, Wood. Yeah, Wood. That's right. Johnson. That's, that's different. It's more community based. Right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's totally uh, different this, this from this. Oh, this, this is completely different. Yes. This is a different. This is oh, a different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is the when Ted Brady. Yeah. Brady in his house. So what would this? What would you be? In, so we know what you'd be applying to. What would you be applying for? What? 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 What's the money coming in for? And what would it do? Right. We're going to totally uh, renovate the Barrels building. So we would uh, tear the walls down to the bones, put new insulation, new wiring, new plumbing, new heating system, um, fix the slate roof that's on it. Uh, just basically, when we're done, we think it'll be almost like new, you know, so it's a total refurbish or rehab. Or and it would be the church portion, not the medical, not the lower parking lot where you're putting something else in. No, this is, this, this is for the Barrow's house. This is for the Barrow's house on Main okay. Street. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 okay. So the idea is to, uh, Don and I could have fixed it up to get it running, but uh, we kind of like to leave it uh, and, and work with the state since they seem kind of eager to work with us. Um, let's let's get the thing so it lasts another hundred years. Mm -hmm. You know, let's put some effort behind it. You know, I keep looking at that building, of course, you know, not because I own it, but I just, when I view the town, you know, that building is, is the old queen of the town. There's no question about it. And a lot of other ones have been chopped up and this and that, they're still nice. But this could be the second piece of Johnson. I, I truly believe that if it's done right. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, I got a pretty good feeling from Mr. Brady that mm -hmm. he seemed to say that there's a lot of cute kittens, but yours seems a little cuter. So, yeah. I don't know. Those are his exact words. Those are his exact words. That's so funny. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to try to do all we can to take the burden off the town as far as putting this together. So how does a community development block grant work other than our signature? Contribution from us or I I don't believe you're asking for much. No. no. So it um the way the program is structured it can only be awarded to a, to a municipality. Mm -hmm. um, but that is the the lead the limit of the commitment that is being asked so that they the, the the town basically applies on behalf of a nonprofit, and then the funds are transferred uh, to them. There is some um, administrative oversight work that does have to happen. Um, that is something that you know, we would be uh, we would be available to to assist with that piece of so independent on the town. It's really just the town would be willing to be the avenue for for that. Um, and that's because the way it's structured, only the municipality can can apply. It's, the structure so basically the motion would be the town uh, a move that the town would be an applicant in the community development block grant for the proposed development of the barrows building correct yeah yes so that's my motion second the motion is second uh, so just to be clear that this doesn't uh, work like the block grant that sterling market got where they had to pay that back. That was a loan that they paid back to the town. That's not what this I is. I believe they're talking about a grant. Not this a is a straight up grant. Yeah, yeah, grant. Okay. A straight grant. So there will not have that complication. Mm -hmm. um, Greg, I think I've said it to you in person, maybe over email, but um, I can't tell you how relieved the business community is and, and residents that you've taken on this project, not having um, the cafe there, and then also just seeing this disrepair of that building has been heartbreaking and horrible. <laughs> so, thank you. Well, thank you guys. We thank appreciate you. That. We'll do uh, as much as we can do to try to help. No, this is thank huge. This is this, huge. This thing, this thing could be a big 
a big help. Like I said, we could patch it up and get it going. But, sure. You know, no, kind of like to build something that's going to be here for a long time after no. I'm gone. Yeah. No. Thank you. So. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Uh, light industrial park or Jewett property, as most people would think of it. Uh, we've not been officially notified on the two uh, grants that we uh, went for that it appears we did not get because they released a list and we weren't on the list, but they've not officially notified us that we were not. However, I did sit in on a phone call with Brian Friday with the EDA, and he was very optimistic that uh, we have a very strong application for this grant. And it's it would it would be a grant for the full amount one million thirty eight thousand. Uh, as soon as we can get the proposal submitted to him, and that should be within a couple of weeks. They are committed within thirty days to let us know if uh, if we're a strong candidate, and then we have to fill out the uh, full application. And we have 90 days to do that. Obviously, we'd probably do it in less. Uh, the criteria for this particular type of grant is number one, line of eligibility uh, from FEMA direct dis disaster. Uh, and since we have we are part of the Irene, that qualifies us for that line item. The second line of eligibility is the fact that uh, Johnson is reorganized as a qualified opportunity zone. That's the second thing that uh, makes us eligible. And the third, we hit all three of these, which was great. Well, this isn't so great. It's our per capita income is so low that uh, we qualify. So with all three of those things, we're really high marks for, uh, for potentially being approved of this one. This is a regional director, and if they give the green light, then it goes to DC and some amount of time, you know, they can't predict how long it would take before DC would uh, make it, uh, a ruling, but they've never seen an issue where something they had put forward had not been approved by DC. So basically, if we get them on board, it, it's a pretty high likelihood that we'll get this grant it's an 80, 20% match. And he did caution us, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky, is uh, they do not like to see in-kind type of contributions. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we've been very, uh, you know, using a lot is in-kind contributions because we deal with state grants. This would be a federal grant and they do not, when in-kind contributions are identified, a flag goes up with them. And, you know, it's the, you know, a, a Chicago with the corruption, you know, there's issues there. With Johnson, Vermont, there's match. not issues. In Vermont, there's not issues, but uh, they deal with communities all over the country. So what he that. suggested is that we would be prepared to have to make that 20% match, which would be in the neighborhood of 200,000. But if the grant was uh, issued, we could do some in-kind work that would reduce that amount to where what we would have to contribute as far as cash on hand. And this sort of plays into something that I was gonna bring up anyways, I sent you all an email on is hiring someone and and I did indicate maybe Duncan because of his he's been with this project since the get-go and have somebody who is dedicated to just this project and out there looking for opportunities 
and chasing down opportunities, uh, doing the grant applications, take a lot of the workload off Brian. Brian will still need to be involved, and he would, whoever we selected would, you know, be underneath Brian, but uh, just somebody that is dedicated to this project and try to see it through. And one of the first assignments, if this was granted, if we received this, would be to go out and look for uh, gap funding type of grants that there possibly could be out there from the state level. And we, uh, I asked the guy this question, if we could still do that, and he said, yeah, we could do that. If we can find another grant that would complement the, with this one, that could go to reduce our 200,000. So it's, uh, it's really good news. It's certainly not in the bag yet, but uh, it's one of the most uh, optimistic readings I've seen of a possible funding source. We don't have to take action tonight, but I did want to plant that seed of maybe looking at whether we hire Duncan or someone else, but to just be the, you know, dedicated to just this one project. But I think it's a good idea to have someone having looked at the amount of workload that, based on the prioritization uh, that Brian has to do, that uh, uh, attention sometimes uh, makes you an early bird getting the work. Mm -hmm. And I would just also note that Seth's involved from LCPC as well as John Mandeville from uh, LEDC. They're, everyone's looped in. So. Yeah, I think this is really smart and we need to be super proactive yeah. <laughs> on this project. We've uh, been working on this. Were you even on the board when we started this? First looking at Jewett property? It's been like over a decade. Yeah, I, I would say that I don't want to admit my beginnings <laughs> in this, depending on where it comes out. It's just nothing happens quickly, and, uh, and I hate to see this. Well, I would like to see it completed before I'm gone. I'm very I mean, from the earth. I mean, <laughs> you're dead. I'm yeah, I'm, when I'm, before I'm dead. Yeah. I'm very concerned with uh, $200,000, yeah. which is totally contrary to what we promised our yeah. voters. But, uh, you're looking at a pile of money and you're looking at something you said you wouldn't do so and to get that kind of money we would have to go back to the voters obviously yeah, no. so you said one million thirty eight thousand so one million three hundred eighty thousand one million thirty eight thousand one million thirty eight thousand and that would that's that's not just a planning uh, updating that's construction, the right? plans, that's construction. Yeah, as I understand it, it's the infrastructure. And infrastructure. you can correct me wrong if it, it's the, the infrastructure. Well, we have to update the plans first, which right. is going to be a significant cost. So that would, that, this would include that. I think I'd have to confirm with Brian that I believe that that is included. Um, just so you're, you're all aware, the EBA funding that Brian has been pursuing um, is a significantly larger um, sh uh, pot of money than he usually has for uh, the Eastern region. Um, it's tied to the past uh, flooding and, and um, other disasters that have happened over the last 10 years. Um, so it's, it's more than double what they usually have and specifically earmarked for communities with a history of um, uh, flood impacts as well as um, you know, uh, demographic challenges like uh, lower incomes. Mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of competitiveness, this terms some of the challenges you are very well, are very familiar with in a lot of ways and to, um, into an opportunity to make this project work. And I don't think we have to worry about that lot of getting flooded up there either. Well, no, that, that was one of the that makes it strong. Yeah, you were developing out of a flood area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Johnson is so flood prone. Yeah. But anyways, there'll be more to come on that. Uh, right. It was just really good. Yes. Info. Perfect. Yes. Great. Good news.
unless you've got any further information on that or, uh, or anybody's got any further questions. No, no, just, um, thank you. They're very excited and they've had mountain applications from Vermont in about a decade. So, oh, wow. Um, wow. They want to invest in Vermont, they just haven't been getting new applications. So that's another thing that makes us strong. Yes, let's do it. So please pass that on. Yeah. Lois. <laughs> On the line. Okay. Uh, skate park appointment. Something that can happen in your lifetime. In my lifetime. <laughs> Thank God. Some of you will worry to go to sleep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we would like the board to appoint James Whitehill to our committee. Condolences. Well, you haven't been appointed yet. Move to uh, appoint. James Whitehill here and so why do you think we should appoint you? <laughs> so uh, I just moved in town and I've been looking at the, the Jumpstone Johnson. I'm not sure if you recognize the name, but my mom lives in Brooklyn, so I spend a lot of time up in Johnson in the okay. summers. And I've yeah. been you know, down there occasionally and you know, just moving into town. I just reached out to Casey um, and just said Hey, I'd like to do some building over there, do some, you know, refreshing of the dirt jumps, the bike side of the, the skate park. Uh, and so I've been going to the committee meetings, so Casey asked me to officially be home to the committee. Perfect. And he hasn't run away. He hasn't run away. <laughs> What's the board's pleasure? Move to appoint James Whitehall to, or Whitehill. Okay, Whitehall. that's Ron Sir in our, it's like, wait. That's your parents' last name. <laughs> we have Chief a, Escape Committee. We have a motion. Do we have a sec second? Do you have any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Congratulations, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for moving to town. Yes. yes. Uh, health officer appointment. I believe this is where we have to appoint Tracy as the first health officer. Have you accepted a resignation? Uh, Thank you. Hey, make sure you come for the rummage sale. Yes. Oh, have you got anything there? <laughs> <laughs> it be it's Friday and Saturday, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They've been out standing and the people that are helping us put it all together. It's amazing. Awesome. awesome. Good, good. We'll see you there. Okay. Good night. Thank you. So, new appointment. I don't know if it just, uh, if we appoint her as the first health officer, it overrides the second health officer. I'm not sure how it works. But. Do we need to accept a resignation first? Yeah. Well, I'm not sure if she submitted a resignation, or does this just trump That's it? That's just, oh, it's too soon, trump it. Okay. Okay. You mean she has to resign as deputy health officer? Mm -hmm. Does she have to resign as deputy health officer? No, well, that's the question. Because she can't do a resignation if she died. Yeah, so we have a, a vacant Spot. position, and they, Supposedly automatically appointed me, but I never got anything. This agenda says that you need to accept Tracy's resignation as a deputy health officer and appoint her in the health officer. Okay, so it must be she did some out of resignation. Well, that's just what I said, Ms. Peter. I okay, I wasn't listening to you. <laughs> okay, what's the board's pleasure there? I'd I guess I'd look for a motion to accept Tracy's resignation as deputy. So moved. We have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And then I would entertain a motion to appoint her as the health officer. So moved. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And, oh, Nat, you've got the floor. What I do? Oh, I've got two minutes. Um, 
Yeah, so I passed out the uh, Mark County Sheriff's Department patrol budget proposal for the next fiscal year. Um, before I get into the details of it, I just wanted to give a couple little things. Um, the uh, sheriff is partnering sort of in a first of its kind partnership with the, in the Northeast with the DEA. He's gonna be bringing on someone with the EA assistance to help with um, um, drug investigations in the area. Um, and that's gonna be very significant. Um, I guess that's the only thing that I wanted to, to mention, but um, so in the budget, you'll see total operating budget, he's looking for a proposed increase of 2.63%, but because of um, sort of the way that the numbers are happening, the reallocation of funds for the resource officer, that our contribution would go up $49,000, which is 10.5%. Um, You'll look and you'll see down below where it says the model union resource officer. That was in the in the current fiscal year. That's a um, revenue of eighty one thousand dollars, but that is, as Eric would say, money in, money out, um, because that's money that's being paid in from the model union, but because he's paying the resource officer, that money is going towards that resource officer. Um, the the resource the reason that that's in the patrol budget is because that resource um, officer has been used in the past as um, uh, backups not quite the right word but um, to to fill in as needed for patrol um, the resource officer in the past has been a part time sort of thing it's only during school. Um, and he's moving that around so the resource officer will be completely separate from the patrol budget and therefore fully funding, um, uh, bringing all of the, um, having full staffing of patrol in itself. Um, so we could add in that. So for instance, if that, um, Resource officer was still in the budget as an eighty-one thousand dollar revenue would also be an eighty-one thousand dollar expense at least, if not more. Um, I didn't explain that great, but that's the reason that you see only a, a, a two point six three percent increase in the in the overall budget, but a ten point five percent increase in the contribution from us. Um, one number that'll really jump out at you is the health insurance benefit, which is up. Um, 69% for him. Um, he attributes that to um, more of his staff have families than they did in the previous year, um, where there were predominantly single people covered under the insurance. Now it's families. Um, other things that jump out. are not um, huge ones overall. Patrol equipment, vehicles is something that we had agreed upon previously that we would begin paying more and more for actually our fair share for the cruiser expenses because he'd been bearing most of that cost um, or a significant portion of that cost himself outside of the patrol budget. Um, now we're beginning to pay our fair share for that. So I told him we would, I would, uh, Ryan and I told him we would bring it into you and get your reaction. Um, but didn't really make any <laughs> commitments, obviously, because we couldn't. Their pay and benefits is over $1 million. Mm -hmm. Just added them up. Okay. One million fifty three fifteen thousand three hundred and forty. 
Ровно два ебарка. Let's go to chunk of change. I don't think uh, I don't think our voters will go for it. Pardon me? I don't think that we could get support for this budget in the town. Probably. I, so the assessment 517 uh, 103, that's is that including dispatch? No. Okay. That's just patrol. This is just patrol. Okay. Um, what was the other town's reaction? Quiet and somber. We all said we'll take it back to our boards and see and meet back again in a couple of weeks. Um, I, I, I don't see Wolcott going for it. Um, I think we're, also, we're, we're the biggest... Um, we're the biggest town in the mm -hmm. in the contract, so I think that we have a kind of an outside sized say over whether we go for it or not. Mm -hmm. Not sure Hyde Park would agree. Certainly Hyde Park and Johnson carry the the water here. Although per capita I guess it's probably well, per, equal burden per capita is equal burden. Um, yeah, so I don't know what, you know, we could potentially be looking at uh, reduction in service. I don't know if we can part-time patrol. But it's a, a little bit of a playing with the numbers, for lack of better words. Um, Yes, it's only 2.63% increase in the budget. However, when you take out the revenue of 81,000, right. it makes it significantly, something significantly more than 2.6%. Sure. And he's, he's still... The, the patrol budget is still 2.6% above last year, current year, and that's without the 81,000 expense, too. Mm -hmm. And we can see where some of it goes, obviously. The health insurance, um, having a full crew, I believe. Yes, yeah. full now. Yep. That adds expense, although I would think there'd be an offset with not paying overtime. What kind of uh, direction do we want to give Nat to go back? How many people? Is how many full-time employees are there? Six. Right. Six officers, then we've got the detective. Six officers and a detective? And the sheriff's salary is not in this? It's baked into here. It's in the salaries. And we don't pay his entire salary through this. He's got 4% of his budget or so will be. I didn't ask specifically how much, but it's... Uh, it's under the state. So it's six people equipment. Vehicles. Vehicles. Not the communications. Not the communications. But office and uniforms and. Insurance, yep. Uh, the health insurance went up quite a bit. That's fifty six thousand. Which was a sixty nine percent increase. Yeah. 
which is you know one of our one of the towns increased by itself you know yep that's our one <clears throat> 467 to 517. That's about our increase. Yeah, one of the others. So the, the person at Memorial Union was passed through, but they used them on the patrol too. So summers they were a write off. They, they were. They're being used as a pillar. So they're charging the Memorial Union for the summers and putting them on patrol. Who knows, huh? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Did Roger have any sense of how hopeless this would look to us and any suggestions? I wonder how much time they spend in Elmore. That's a 20 hours a week or, or a month? A month, I think it's more like. I don't I don't know precisely, but it's a it's a set number of hours. So whatever it is is fifteen thousand five hundred and fifteen dollars. Five hundred and fourteen. Now it is that but we're paying those guys to be on duty anyhow. So that's actually a good thing. Right, right. right. I mean we get that out of them, but how did, does he bill that? Does he bill that with pay and benefits? I wonder. It's a straight contract. Okay. He it doesn't, it's not. It's a set number of hours. And he bills in 17,000 or well, you know, 15, 514. So now, so we, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. We could say we want to cut this and he would say, Oh, I, I can't structure myself to deliver these, you know, services. There's a whole, yep. you know, it's got to match. Then we'd have to get creative. Um, the you know, the work that they're doing around drug enforcement right now is significant um, and valuable, as is the work that they're doing around. Um, uh, sexual abuse and investigating sex crimes. Sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to ask about the the collaboration you mentioned with the DEA. How does that financially? Financially, it has no impact on us for at least the first two years. Okay. Um, the DEA is putting up some portion of the expense. I forget exactly exactly how it breaks down. And Roger's putting up some portion of the expense from his other budgeted funds. Mm -hmm. um, but this, so that's there's nothing. There's nothing in these budgets about that. Um, there would be the potential after two years when the DEA mm -hmm. funding runs out, then we have to figure out, well, do we want to continue with this and pay for it? Or do we want to uh, <coughs> that up, but that's covered <coughs> separate right now. Mm -hmm. um, so but it's it's work that I wouldn't want to, you know, but five or eight years back, we um, added the detective to the contract. This isn't really a great time to cut that detective um, because of the drug work that he's doing. It's really, um, it's, it's at the point where um, could, we need that position. Given where our community's at. <clears throat> So this is, how, how does this differ from the criminalization of uh, marijuana and whatnot that we went through before? You know, there's been a switch in terms of opioids and stuff, you know. There's no doubt about, you know, the effect on our community. I'm just wondering where you throw your money. I mean, the DEA has money that they, they put in, but I, I'm, that's a, I don't understand what you're saying. Okay. Um, a lot of times in drugs, you don't uh, get out of it by uh, dealing with criminals, by criminalizing behavior or policing, you know? Mm -hmm. More you know? prevention. So I, 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 it's real clear there's a big problem in our community, 
and I'm not certain if Jenna's promise is more of a, a, a solution than the criminal, than the police aspect. It's a good question. I guess I would see Jenna's promise as the long-term solution, but they got to deal with the issues that are on St. John Street right now. And that, you know, yeah, but that takes foot time. on the ground. That takes time too. I mean, that takes years to to pursue those those sorts of cases. Did you folks drop your volume down? I've got my hearing aid turned up all the way. <laughs> I, I turned so you wouldn't hear me. <laughs> no, I heard you. <laughs> but I, that can hardly hear a word you say. Ah, uh, I'll try and speak up. I'm feeling down about this issue. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess what's concerning, you know, typically when we go through our budget process, we come down to something that's in line close with the rate of inflation. And yeah, it does usually impact taxes. Taxes usually do go up, but hopefully it's somewhere within the rate of inflation, typically. Um, you know, it seems like every year the patrol comes in year after year with some very significant increases, and there's always a reason for them, and we we absorb that in our own budget somewhere. But I don't think it's sustainable. With, you know, their their increases should be something closer to what we require of all of our departments. That you know, they're somewhere near the rate of inflation. I mean, I don't know what percentage-wise that is to Johnson for the tax in, impact, but I mean, that's what's really important to us is not what his budget number is going up, it's how much is our liability going up. And this is going to put us uh, something north of uh, half a million dollars. When you pay over a million dollars in wages and benefits, doesn't give you much room for anything else. Right. I know. Well, in the, I mean, the, ins the, the benefit, I mean, the health insurance, I mean, there's not a lot any of us can do about that. I mean, that's a bigger <laughs> issue. But they had a terrible need. jump there with their health insurance. But a lot of Vermonters mm -hmm. did have, I mean. But I think that was because of families versus singles officers that they had because i yeah. think for us isn't it going to be about level funded did brian send a note out I was it a minimal good. increase or this year yeah over 10 percent oh is it yeah. okay never I mind your dreams. <laughs> 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 yeah no i think we're all going to really feel that 69 percent it seems I'd, crazy i'd like to it seems crazy dig but. into that a little bit more uh we, you know, he, he, should, but, yeah. he has to, he, he has to have a, uh, a salary package and benefits package that at least is almost competitive with the towns around us. Otherwise, yeah, they go other places and that's, we're already at a disadvantage of that because of the retirement system. But, um, so it's, it's not like we can just say, well, go, you know, cut the healthcare benefits, um, there's not really much room here to cut. We have economic development and our community being uh, welcoming to people and enticing them in. It's hard to say we don't have policing and we want to cut this. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure we need policing from 1 to 6 a.m. Uh, you know, the state police do go off the road and early morning. Um, Roger always bristles at that, and I understand why, but that's a, that's something we could push a little bit. If, if he did go to that kind of a patrolling, could he reduce it down to five officers? And that would be a savings of whatever an officer comes out to do. Maybe. 
I mean, I know it's in the wrong direction from what he wants to do, but. Other than making cuts in, in the number of officers, how do you cut a budget? If there is no large line item other than salaries here. Yep. Salaries are done. Partially because it took away that resource officer, but yeah. Okay. So even even without the resource officer, with the resource officer salaries would be up. It's still. Lost eighty one thousand for the cost of the resource officer, yet uh, the salaries only went down twenty three thousand. Cambridge is happy with their state police, aren't they? I guess mm -hmm. it's a pretty good sized community there too. Jeff Cambridge. Do they have a um, satellite place there? Mm, I think they still do. I believe so. So, um, <clears throat> are we going to get a committee together to talk about alternatives? Yes. Yeah. We ought to get a price from the state police. I don't think you'll find that the state police really has capacity. I wonder. I don't know. They're, they're when they do con, I mean, it's on, uh, yeah, it, it's based on officers willing to work overtime to fulfill those contracts. That's how those are filled when they contract with towns. And, the, I mean, the legislature at some point the legislature is going to have to sort out this whole thing. There are towns in the state that pay very little for policing and they get a lot. There are towns that pay very, pay a lot, get very little. Um, that there's just no equity in the state. And there are portions of the state that are very badly covered. Um, that would be us if we didn't have um, this contract. I mean, state police, we can contract for patrol services, but we're not going to, that's not going to get us the detective and um, <laughs> so. What would the uh, voter's appetite be of not having the police service? Say that again. What would the voter's appetite be of not having a police service? I don't think it'd be very good. I think everybody figures there's a need for police. Did you see that one on the TV, WCAX, a uh, woman that would call state police because her place was being robbed? She had, she was watching them on video. She had a camera and it was hours before a state trooper responded. Yeah. That's yeah, what response. we're going to get. Yeah. And she, the next town out of Virginia's with just full time police force, but of course they're paid to patrol Virginia's, not everywhere else. But, you know, what would the voters in Johnson do if they have an active burglary going on and they call the state police and yeah, I know. they show up at 10 o'clock because they're sleeping? They need the example at a town meeting in order to have that question pull it fully in front of them because they're in town meeting they look at the budget mm -hmm. i mean what what we're paying for here is personal connection with the sheriff that we can communicate with we're getting quick response time um we're getting you know um getting a very well trained force who is who yeah do anywhere from social service to criminal, you know, yeah. and yeah. those are the needs social of our community. They're in all those areas. We get a lot. We get a lot. Yeah. 
So we want to provide any feedback from that to take back. I think he's already sitting where we would. <laughs> and we're not we're glad we're not sitting where he is. <laughs> I think the town does a real good job of trying to keep our costs down, but unfortunately there's another big driver in the community that we have no very little control over, and that's the school budget. Right. Well. Wow. And that's what really is hurting everybody in their wallets. More so than the town's budget is. Are we not going to have the appraisal coming in this spring? Yes. And so when this budget comes out, we will have a revised appraisal, which uh, they're not giving us any hints on, I presume. But I would suspect that it will be substantially increased. Uh, and um, although it may be redistributed mm -hmm. you know, somewhat. Uh, and. Uh, We'd be busy. We may be hearings. I'd like to hear from the public. Um, what are your thoughts? What do you think would the reaction would be with a fifty thousand dollar increase in the for Johnson's share in the budget, which is ten percent? I think there'll be a lot of concern. Any, you know, any big change like that, I think you throw out a couple of alternatives to be able to talk to the sheriff. You know, do we need patrols from? In the middle of the night. But I'm not worried, it isn't very often. But in some of the town, it's usually not a soul. <laughs> and Roger would say that's when, you know, the criminals figure that out pretty quickly. So if they know the response time at 3 a.m. is really terrible. And, and what are they going to do at 3 a.m.? Well, well, rob your house. Or you're sleeping. Burn or something. break into business is probably right. Yeah, they're, right. they're closed. Yeah, that, yeah. But your other alternative was to reduce it by one officer, but that was no, those were related. Yeah, we got, we got one officer 24 7, 365. So, and the, the 69 percent increase in uh, health insurance. Um, does he have any control over that? Can they, is that something that could happen here in Johnson if all of a sudden everybody decided to? Everybody gets married? Yeah, if if all of our employees got married, and, or I guess they all are married, but they married, have, have, have a family, have a bunch of kids, then yeah, it could happen. They went from a family plan from a single fa single plan. And and with the benefits, you get a question of will they leave for benefits? Oh, yeah. No, we're already oh. behind the envelope on benefits. Yeah. Right behind the uh, because they don't get retirement because their retirement. Package is so much worse than the municipal departments. It's really all that he has to, I mean, yeah. to offer, right? Well, the sheriff has a 30 year retirement, and most municipalities have a 20. Mm -hmm. He's trying to get that fixed, but it's, uh, mm -hmm. he's fine. I mean, he has recently attracted some really good, experienced people from other departments in the state, which has been great. Um, Keeping them now. Yeah. I don't know exactly why they came here as opposed to staying in the municipal department but it's, it's okay go get them thank you <laughs> thank you you're supposed to pound on the table and say we won't pay that we won't pay that yeah. so that i can go back to them and say hey, johnson we're uh, you can say we're we won't pay <laughs> we were dumbfounded and we couldn't we were in shock and we didn't even get a lot of public input. Tell me that trim at 50 gram, we're going to go to the state police. <laughs> he is going to take another stab at it, correct? If we ask him to. I'm going to ask him to. Yes. Well, yes. yeah. But if he's got fixed costs of a million dollars, there isn't a whole lot he can trim. If we want to keep the same yeah, coverage. Same yeah. coverage in the same. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, just want to remind everybody, Wednesday's a disaster recovery statewide exercise. Uh, they will be serving lunch. <laughs> so at least you'll be here during lunchtime. Here? Yep. You're serving lunch? Are we supposed to show up here on Wednesday? Or are we just yep. waiting until they oh. show up? I uh, uh, think it starts at 9. Oh, God. Nine. Except for Doug. Lunch only. You coming here? Mind yeah, I'll what? be here, but I was planning to have a back seat roll just and let Doug go. Well, Doug's out, so to be here. Well, Doug has out all of a sudden. Yeah. Initially, he was going to be here. No, no. Oh, now his senior member, I guess, and take over. Uh, I've also invited at about 11 for all of the uh, highway and office crew to come up and go through the tabletop exercise with us and because if rosemary wasn't out or was out not available somebody else would have to fill her role and the same thing with brian krause just so that everybody gets a feel for you know what they would do if uh if they had to get so many tonnage of gravel where would they get it if if our gravel pit was not accessible you know those kind of things to look at if you need to get a bunch of culverts to replace ones that went down the river, where would you go get them? And those type of things to look at. And if you needed extra trucking or whatever. Um, and then up for the office, calling in resources, whether it's the Red Cross or whoever. And then uh, there'll be a lunch. And then I, as I understand, there's some kind of a, uh, you know, right a, a, a debriefing afterwards where you can critique it and stuff like that. That'll be good. So nine to about five. Uh, I won't be here for the whole day. I'm going to leave after lunch. But, you are? Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. Whatever you guys can put in. Okay. I'm going to work for myself, but I have to be in the office that day. Because he's the only attorney in town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And he's starving. Waiting for a client to come in. <laughs> uh, did anybody have anything else? <laughs> every time I go by your office, or every time I go in your office, you're always busy. Well, then we'll stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Lois. Thank you.